First off, you find HIV positive, and then you believe that you're going to die, as you get told, which is like a food and curse, because you really do start crashing. And your brain's your already, if you believe that you, you're going to die. I mean, now, there is a correlation, because you might have some other fungal disease, so maybe there's some slight... Co I mean, you find it on the British government site, they say, as a statistical, they don't actually say what the statistical correlation is, so I don't know if it's 1%, 10% or what, but there's a statistical correlation between testing positive and getting AIDS. But I would say that is there because fungus and microbacteria test positive. I was just say the link between sexual transmission and AIDS, I feel like really being a heretic now. Um, <laughs> the Nancy Padian study, Nancy Padian is a big star in the firmament, which is a major professor. Her study, she took around 180 couples where one partner was HIV positive and the other one negative. And she monitored them for a number of years. She also said, oh, please wear condoms. Uh, when she reported her conclusion, she said there was not one single case of transmission and one third of the couples didn't use condoms. There wasn't any transmission. So what have we been told? She's actually now very embarrassed, which is denying that she reported it, but I've got a paper. Also in England last year, I think, a fresh deep of, of English-born women now you're getting tested automatically when you go to before birth. And there's only about 40 to 50 HIV positive women in the entire country, thousands of men. Brasses don't really spread like that, they don't, they're not gen, gender sensitive. And so the idea, and um, I think about 2,000 of the men are gay, and so, but it's not being gay, it's much more to do with a certain scene which I had friends that have been involved in, of uh, big parties and using enhanced by drug taking. And in that community, there is quite a high, high percentage still today. But women are not falling ill. You know, they say they give you percentage increases. When one woman, she was a feminist, and she complained that all the Caesar seemed to be with men. Well, pharmacists must affect women as much as anyone else. So she complained that they couldn't be looking at female diseases. So cervical cancer is now an AIDS indicating illness. There's over 40 illnesses aimed, and they're all called AIDS. They're all like TB. They all pre-existed. But if you find an antibody, which could beat all these things, then they claim that it's indicating AIDS, so they're called opportunistic diseases. They do the same with measles. The people that die of measles die of diarrhoea and pneumonia normally. Oh, but they're not caused by the measles bug, even in your theory. So what causes them? Ah, the measles virus, we found some genetic code, so it must be there, and it must weaken the immune system like HIV. And so the kid gets pneumonia, the kid gets diarrhoea, and it now goes back to being measles they died of. The same way of working. Um, I've got a virology textbook at home written by two professors, it's normal standard work. And again, and there's this mind blowing stuff when you read it carefully because like, they're dealing with flu and he has people lined up. There's people on one side of the table all coughing and spluttering, and people on the other side that are not coughing and spluttering, and he has no cases of transmission. And he tries to explain it, he said maybe there's psychological reasons for this. Can I ask a question that no one's asked yet? And then answer it. <laughs> it's about Africa, because we all know that South Sahara, there's thousands of Africans dying of AIDS, right? What are they dying of? Now, because the HIV test was declared unreliable in Africa back in 1985, they, they had a World Health Organization had a big meeting in Bangui on the west coast of Africa to work out criteria for declaring that Africans have got AIDS. It's called the Bangui defini clinical definition today is on the World Health Organization's website. And why are journalists don't go and read it? They should. Because what it says is that the scoring thing, if you get 12 points, you've got AIDS. It's symptoms. If you've got fever, four points. If you've got, God, I can't remember what I'm saying. Um, if you've got, uh, God, I'll go and play that now, Rina. But it's all kind of common. If you've got an itch, dermatitis, <laughs> that's three points. <coughs> and oh, if yeah. you've got diarrhoea yeah. for a month, that's four points. You've got AIDS. 
Oh, and love lost 10% of the body weight. Yes. That's another one. He gets three points, I think, for that one. But you've got to make up 12. So a kid that's got impure water supply will have diarrhea. If they've got diarrhea over a month's period, this is us, they've got 10% weight loss. If they've got dermatitis or fever, intermittent fever, then they've got eight. Now, the derm this is very serious. It's on all the government forms throughout Africa. It's how they mark down Africans as having AIDS. you only got to have no HIV test as necessary. You've got, and that's only for an antibody, so I'm saying. You simply got to have symptoms that will go with malaria, with impure water supplies, and lots of diseases. They, that definition of it, now you won't think of it, that definition is not used in England. So why has the same disease got a set of definitions for Africa? It was partly because they needed to have women infected. Because the big argument was that in the West, women are not going down with AIDS. So it proved it wasn't viruses. So, ah, but in Africa, women get diarrhea, women get... <laughs> so that proved it was a virus because African women have got AIDS equally to African men. And they did it by another contract. And it's so infuriating because it's now... If you go to the South African government statistics for mortality, you find AIDS is right down there. But they claim AIDS is on top because they add all the TB cases in. And TB is a major killer in Africa. Mm. At the start, there's no proof that measles virus causes measles. Nothing. You know, I told you how they isolated. There's no, those cells didn't get measles. They just got distorted. So we know, and the thing they put in to the vaccine after that as measles virus, the only reason they've got to say it does any damage is because those poison cells are distorted. So fundamentally, in, you use toxins to make persuade cells in everything, including in HIV research, you add toxins to make the cells produce what they call HIV. Um, you add toxins to produce flu virus, you add toxins to produce measles virus, you add toxins, you poison the cell. And, then this, and that's universal, it's how we do it in our labs today. And yet, why aren't we saying that this is a product of poisoning of the cell? We tend to then go on and say it causes measles. Now, when, how can you prove that the toxic product is causing measles? There's nothing there. There's no scientific proof in that experiment whatsoever. So, I, you know, I say it for measles, I say it definitely for polio. I set for HIV, given I've read the original papers. Um, it really undercutting, all well, this is really undercutting the basis of a lot of popular medicine, you must realise, because we, and it's much, it's going beyond what a lot of books on vaccines say, because we, it's been so much assumed that we had the cause of the illness. And because we've assumed it, you see, it's so difficult to prove something short and alike that it causes an illness. You use a cox postulate. You've got to first find a thing, and you've got to prove, OK, I've got it, and I've managed to isolate it, which is extremely difficult for something that's tiny. But I can see it in an electron microscope. So there's a little round thing there with a genetic code inside it. And now I've got to prove that tiny thing is the one and only unique cause of that illness. Now, doing all these experiments, you've made genetic changes to it, it's altered in the lab, it doesn't stay the same in vitro. Now you've got to prove by putting it in what? Putting it in a child that's unethical. So they can't actually test it to prove they can put it in a pig or a monkey or a rat. But what they're putting in, they're putting in quite a toxic artificial particle. The particle has significantly changed in the course of the lab work. So again, we're away from the original virus. You see, cells, cells try to survive the, like us. Go in, they are us. You go into a laboratory, you make a cell culture, those, power, those cells do not stay the same. And what they produce is artificial, it's in our laboratory, artifact.